In this video, we're going to be showing you how to replace your electronic unit injector in a C10 or C12 engine. We will then discuss how to set your unit injector height and the intake and exhaust valves. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to change a C10 or C12 unit injector. We're going to be going over how to remove the overhead, remove the injector, clean the injector bore, install the new injector, torque specs for everything, reinstalling the overhead, and how to adjust your overhead for intake, exhaust, and injector height, okay? Find this video useful, maybe consider sending a donation to adeptape at yahoo.com. They are greatly appreciated, and on to the video. Thank you. So we have a C10 here. We're gonna be changing all of the injectors, but I'm gonna be showing you how to do the number one injector, and we need to remove these valve covers first and get this air cleaner out of the way. So we've removed the valve covers here, inline six engine. The C10 and C12 are the precursors to the C11 and C13, by the way. So we have your number one injector here, electronic unit injector. We have your intake, injector, and exhaust rocker arms. Now you'll notice on this side, number two, the intake and exhaust rocker arms are swapped. The C10 and C12s were like that. They have uh, your intake and exhaust rockers swapped from cylinder to cylinder. So, getting ready to remove our number one injector here. You have to remove the rocker arm assembly to get the injector out. So, first thing you're gonna do is remove these two bolts. These are 18 millimeter head. And just zip them off. And now your overhead is ready to come out. Now be careful because your valve bridges can stick sometimes to your rocker arms. So you don't want them falling down where you can't get them. So I've removed the rocker arm assembly. Now you can leave the push rods in there if you want. But I like to remove them and inspect them. And make sure you don't have a bent one or anything like that. Now your intake and exhaust push rods are interchangeable, they're the same length and everything, but your injector one is much bigger, as you can see, than your intake and exhaust push rods. So we have now removed the rocker arms and the push rods. You can leave the valve bridges on if you wish, they're not really going to get in your way. The next step is to remove your injector connector. Now these are electronic unit injectors, so electrically they have to be connected to some wires, and they use these little uh, little hold down nuts. Now these nuts are a weird size, they're 9 30 seconds, and you're gonna zip those off, and they stay uh, together on that little plastic clip. Now you can see your, your connector there. You can actually flip it if you want to, depending on how the solenoid's set up. They're also numbered, so if you're removing multiple injectors, just watch for the number on the connector. So your injector is actually now ready to remove. So you're gonna unbolt the injector hold down bolt. This is a 13 millimeter headed bolt. And you're gonna keep the spacer, but Cat always recommends getting new bolts. So you're now ready to remove the injector. And these injectors pop out pretty easy. You'll need a heel bar or an adjustable heel bar because you can't just pull them out. They're kind of seated in place with O-rings. So you're just going to put your heel bar under the hold down clamp and then pull back and it should pop your injector out. Once it's unseated, you can pull it out by hand. Now hold the hold down clamp while you remove it because it'll fall off once you pull the injector out. So you have your injector out. Your bottom seal is usually gone. It turns into carbon and then you have your two top seals. And then keep your injector hold down clamp because you're going to need to use that later. And notice it says this side up on the one side. That'll be important when you go to reinstall the injector. So your injector's now been removed. Now you're gonna need to clean your injector bore here. You'll get carbon that builds up on the bottom where it inserts into the combustion chamber. So we'll be discussing how I like to clean them. So, got the headlamp on here. You're going to Use a little wire brush if you wish, and you don't have to scrub the injector bore. Really, the carbon buildup's almost always just on the tip of the injector where the combustion chamber is. So you're just going to insert your little bore brush in there and clean it. Um, if the injectors aren't that dirty, you actually don't. You can kind of skip this step if there's no carbon in there, or you can just spray brake clean in there. 
Uh, this engine is uh, fairly older. There was quite a bit of carbon on the bottom of the injector tip, so I did the bore brush. But sometimes I just use the brake clean and spray it, spray it down, get that injector bore nice and clean. Now, all that brake fluid and also you're going to have fuel that leaks into the cylinder when you remove your injector needs to be removed. So what I have is a vacuum setup. This is actually for bleeding brakes, but since we don't really use hydraulic brakes on trucks, we uh, I use this for evacuating cylinders. So pull the vacuum basically. You're just going to insert that plastic tube into the injector um, bore and then into the combustion chamber where the piston sits. And by doing that, you're going to pull some fluid out of that cylinder. Now this isn't a Huey system, so you're not going to pull a bunch of oil out. Just going to be some fuel in the brake clean and hopefully a lot of the carbon you got. So there's the fluid you're going to remove from there. So that bore should now be clean. You'll want to take a look and make sure nothing else is missing in there or no bristles or anything from your brush were left in. So your bridges are in place. You're now ready to install the new injector. So with your new injector, you're going to have to slide the hold down clamp over the injector before you insert it in because you can't insert it after. So we have our new injector here. You have your lower o-ring, your middle o-ring, and your top o-ring. And then your hold down clamp. Remember where I said it needs to face up. Now, there's that four digit code there. You're going to want to write that down because these have injector calibration files that you'll have to program later. And you're going to lubricate your O-rings with clean engine oil. And make sure they're properly lubricated all the way around. So this injector is ready to go in. And like I said before, make sure you write down that four-digit code on that solenoid. Because even though if you can't program it, next time you're in a shop, they can program that. And it's supposed to help the engine run better. Um, not a huge difference, though, if you don't program it. Um, but it's... For best performance, you want to program that four-digit code. So you're going to lightly allow the injector to be placed into the injector bore. Now we have our new hold-down bolt. Always replace your injector hold-down bolts. You're going to reuse the spacer. And then you're going to lubricate under the head of the bolt and the threads on the bolt itself. Because you don't want that bolt or anything uh, seizing up while you're trying to torque it. If it's lubricated, it'll torque properly. So, uh, Cat recommends you tighten the bolt, then loosen it, then retighten it. Now, these torque to 22 foot pounds because it's an 8 millimeter bolt. So, what I like to do is I have a little electric impact that doesn't put out very much torque. Uh, just making sure that the O ring's in place there. You can see the top O ring before you've seated the injector. So what I like to do is zip the bolt down. Like I said, this gun does not put out very much torque, so you're not going to over-torque this bolt. Then you're going to loosen it. And then I just seat it again real quick. Then you're going to torque it. So the injector's been seated. Now you're going to torque it. And I torque it to 22 foot-pounds. Now I'm... As you can see, I've also replaced number two because I'm replacing all six injectors. But on this one, we're just going to be showing you how to do number one. They're all the same, though. So, torque to 22 foot-pounds. And anything I torque, I always torque striped. So, torque striped. So, that injector has now been installed. And your rocker arms and electrical connector are ready to be reinstalled. Okay, so we've installed our electrical connector. And I am now torquing the hold down nuts to 22 inch pounds as specified by Cat. And even though it looks like it's just a little driver, I'm actually torquing them. Wink, wink. Anyways, so tighten these two hold down bolts for your rocker arms down with my little gun. Now you notice I haven't put the push rods in. And there's two schools of thought. You can try to push the push rods in and then line up your rocker arms. But I like to put the rocker arm assembly on and torque the bolts and then fish the push rods in. I find the uh, the odds of bending a push rod are a lot less and it helps torque the bolts without having any tension on them. So torquing these bolts to 75 foot-pounds. 
These are 12 millimeter bolts. Cat doesn't actually tell you the spec for these bolts on C10, C12s, or C13s. But if you look up a 12 millimeter bolt, it's 75 foot pounds. So those are installed, torque stripe them. So now the next step would be to install your push rods. And the best way to do that is to pin the engine and then see which cylinder you're on TDC and then install the push rods the same order as you would for your overhead adjustment. Now, if you're unfamiliar with pinning the engine, there's on the exhaust side of the flywheel housing, there's a small hole that you can install a bolt in and then rotate the engine, which most people aren't gonna have this rotating tool, but if you even rotate it up front and have someone hold the bolt in the back, wait for the bolt to go in. That'll mean that your number one or number six are on TDC. Now this next part of the video is talking about how to do the overhead and this is the hard part of doing your injector is if you decide to adjust your overhead while you're doing it which i do suggest you can just install the injector reinstall the overhead and not set the injector height or do the intake and exhaust valves but with removing the overhead those settings have probably changed and it's a good idea to go through and reset all of them now this part is somewhat technical compared to the rest of the video. So what we're doing here is we're doing the number one injector. So if you pin the engine like I showed before, you'll be on either compression stroke for number one or number six. If you're on the compression stroke for one, that'll mean both of your valves are closed for one. You can adjust intake and exhaust on one but you can't do the injector until you rotate the engine again 360 degrees. Then you can do the injector height. If you've seen my other videos, particularly the how to set your C13 injector height and your C15 overhead, it explains this step-by-step this, uh, -step process a little better and goes into more detail on it. But in this one, you basically need to know that you can't do your injector height and your exhaust and intake valves at the same time. Now you don't have to necessarily pin it because these engines are in line six. So each cylinder has a sister cylinder, one and six, two and five, three and four. So let's say you're changing number three injector. If you're on number three and you notice that the intake and exhaust valves are both open slightly, that's called valve overlap. If three, if the intake and exhaust valves are slightly open, that means that that piston is at TDC of the exhaust stroke. You can then adjust your injector height. You would then have to rotate another 360 degrees. Your rocker arm should be moved down for your injector, and then you should be able to adjust your intake and exhaust valves. Like I said, this is the most technical portion of the video. Okay, so now we're going to be doing your overhead adjustment. You can see that I've installed the push rods and I have not adjusted them yet though. So looking at this, the shorter rocker arms are your intake and the longer rocker arms are your exhaust and the injectors are the thicker center ones. So 15 thousandths for intake, 25 thousandths for exhaust. Now if you have jakes, this will be more complicated because after you do the overhead, you have to install your jake housings and then do your jake adjustment. This one doesn't have jakes, so we're not gonna worry about that. So I've installed my 15 thousandths feeler gauge under the rocker arm and the bridge there, between the rocker arm and the bridge. And what you're gonna do is I just go finger tight with the screwdriver and then tighten the lock nut. And it should give you a light drag between the rocker arm and the bridge. And that's all you want. So 15 thousandths intake, that one's good and go through after I do the overhead and torque all the lock nuts. It's 22 foot pounds on the intake and exhaust lock nuts and it's 41 foot pounds on the injector lock nut. So our intake is done on number one and we're at TDC on one so we can do our exhaust as well. So we're doing our exhaust. So install the 25 thousandths feeler gauge you're going to run the adjuster down, finger tight, just real loose, right there, and then run the lock nut down. So lock nut's down, you're going to hold the adjuster in place, and then tighten the lock nut. Like I said, I torque these all later, 
just to make sure that they're tight and properly. Should have a light drag on the feeler gauge. Your intake and exhaust valve are now done. So I'm going to torque stripe that one, make sure it's done. And next is going to be the injector. So that you can't do the injector on the same time you're doing the intake and exhaust valve. So you're going to have to rotate the engine 360 degrees for number one. And then you can do your injector. So intake and exhaust are done. We're going to do the injector. So the injector, there's no feeler gauge or special tool you needed. It's actually just a preload. And if you've seen, I have a video talking about how to set all these as well. It's a little more detailed on how to set your C10, 11, 12, or 13 injector height. What you're going to do is make sure your lock nut's loose. You're going to run it in about two full turns in and then loosen it out just to make sure there's no oil or anything in there. And then you're going to have your adjuster loose. So you can see it moves freely, so it's loose. Then what you're going to do is spin your screwdriver until it just stops, meaning it is there's no slack in that injector. Then you're going to turn it 180 degrees additional. So you're going to take it basically finger tight until it's bottomed out, then 180 degrees preload. Once you have the 180 degrees preloaded, you're going to tighten your lock nut. So, like I said, uh, you want the adjuster to be free moving. You know, you can move it with your, you know, tips of your finger. Run it down just with the tips of your finger until it stops. That means all the slack is out of it. Then you're going to turn it 180 degrees, then tighten the lock nut. So your injector height is now installed as well, or adjusted as well. And that is it. Install your valve covers, and you're good to go. You'll want to uh, also prime your fuel system. You don't want these injectors to be fired dry. And that is how you do a C10, C12 injector. Thanks for watching.